For the first time since February, it brings me great joy to say it is a football Friday, live right here on the morning after on Sports Grid. Sirius XM Channel 159, the home for Sports Grid Radio on Sirius XM, all across the Spiz Grizz Network, that's Sports Grid. I am Ben Stevens. A football Friday, the final day of the offseason in college football. The 2022 campaign kicks off tomorrow. Tons of action on your week zero slate. The final week of the NFL preseason underway last night. Two games on your Thursday. Four more on this Friday. A ton on Saturday as well. And even some football Sunday to really set the mood for the start of a new National Football League season as well. But of course, our focus is on college football. Actual games that will have dramatic impacts underway tomorrow. Across the pond. In the Emerald Isle of Ireland, Nebraska, and Northwestern. And we have seen line movement on this number early on this football Friday morning. 13 and a half yesterday. As we have previewed this game multiple times this week here on TMA, the number was near two touchdowns in favor of the Huskers. It is dropped by a full two points. On this Friday morning, Nebraska, now an 11 and a half point favorite against Northwestern. The over understands at 50 in a hook. This game in Dublin tomorrow, inside Aviva Stadium, a Big Ten opener in Ireland. From a handicapping trend perspective based on last year, Nebraska enters this season with tons of optimism. The best 3-9 and nine college football team in the history of the sport because all nine of those losses for the Corn Huskers a season ago, all coming by single digits. But as a favorite last season, Nebraska not overwhelmingly great. Just three and four, both straight up and against the spread. Only one win in Big Ten play, but that came against Northwestern, covering as an 11 point home favorite last year, absolutely blowing out the Cats 56 to 7 in Lincoln. The Wildcats as an underdog, two and six against the spread a season ago but both teams finishing three and nine so when you see that board on your screen and how drastic the difference is based on expectation entering 2022 you might scoff at the idea that nebraska a three-win team a season ago has a win total at seven and a half with the over slightly juiced and that plus 350 price that you saw to win the big 10 west That's the second best odds right now available on the FanDuel Sportsbook. Nebraska has combined for six wins in its last two seasons. Northwestern has the longest odds to win the Big Ten West Championship this year at 100 to 1. But there is history backing up Patrick Fitzgerald and the Northwestern Wildcats. I call him Patrick because he coaches in Ireland tomorrow. Northwestern was the 2018 Big Ten West title winners. Then they won three games in 2019. Then in 2020, another Big Ten West championship. Last year, three wins based on history. Maybe it's worth a long shot price at 100 to 1. Big Ten West divisional foes underway tomorrow in Ireland, in Dublin, a 12.30 p.m. Eastern time kickoff. We will bring you plenty more from this game later on in this show, including a preview with one Connor Happer live from Omaha, Nebraska, covering the Cornhuskers on a daily basis. I will say one final thing about that game. Establishing the run will be at a premium. Nebraska ran for 427 yards against Northwestern a season ago. But it doesn't stop there in the Big Ten West. First, we welcome in our Sports Grid Radio audience here. The opening hour of a football Friday once again on the morning after live here on Sports Grid. Sirius XM, channel 159, the home for Sports Grid Radio on Sirius XM. All of our terrestrial radio affiliates now in the mix as well. I am Ben Stevens. Nebraska and Northwestern tomorrow in Dublin. But that's not the only Big Ten West team in action on your Saturday for Week 0. Illinois hosts Wyoming. And finally yesterday, the Fighting Illini naming a starting quarterback. It will be... Tommy DeVito, the Syracuse transfer, now in Champaign. He will get the start tomorrow against the Cowboys of Wyoming. Tommy DeVito was supposed to be the guy for the Orange. I can say that because Syracuse is my alma mater. Tommy DeVito was a highly rated recruit, supposed to take the reins of Dino Baber's offense back in 2019 
for the Orange. It didn't work out that way. He played in all 12 games in 2019, but just seven games combined in the last two seasons at Syracuse. Now he's at Illinois, and as you can see, the Illini booked as a pretty hefty favorite tomorrow in Champaign against Wyoming. In fact, that line, after DeVito was named the starter for the Illini, moved from 9.5 now to 11.5 in favor of Illinois. It is the final day of the college football preseason because the actual season starts tomorrow. One last off-season look at the college football playoff national championship odds as they are available on the FanDuel Sportsbook. Alabama, the betting favorites, at plus 180. Ohio State, the second best price, at plus 300. The reigning national champions, the Georgia Bulldogs, who beat Alabama in that title game a season ago to win the Dogs' first national championship in more than four decades. They have the third best price at plus 350. Clemson rounds out the top four at eight to one. Plenty more college football conversation coming your way over the course of these next two hours live here on a football Friday on the morning after. But up next, we look at the preseason in the NFL. The final week got underway last night. We recap it next. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. They played last game. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less. Rogers and the morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the Today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell coast to coast. That's where they win cups. Stanley Cups over there. Give me the game practice. time decision. Kind of bizarre when you consider like so everybody is out for the Warriors. In game live I all like access. Mandy. I like Vandy against Bam. I think Vandy can win the game, take a corner. In half. game oh, live man. prime oh, yeah, time. The major, the PGA champion. In yeah. game live overtime. All done before the final bet. Get the game. winning edge only on Sports Grid. The morning after. Is this a market that grabs your attention still here as we get ready for the regular season starting in two weeks? I, I'm taking the points in week one with the Rams, so I don't even know if the Bills are going to get to 1-0. and But the Bucks start at Dallas at New Orleans. If they're 4-0 and after the first month with all of these players that are coming back from injury and figuring out the new offensive line, then I'll really be impressed. Then I'm going to want to jump on that Bucks' best regular season record. The Sports Grid Network. The early line. No exact time set on how long he will be out, but it appears to be at least months of this upcoming season, which is, again, probably what? At least eight games for Tyron Smith? Yeah, reading through the practice reports, it looks like it was devastating news right away off the top, and then you started to get that good feel like, oh, you know what? He avoided major disaster, but really did he? Only on Sports Grid. Sports Professor Rick Carl inside the $1.3 trillion business of sports with your Sports News Minute. Washington Commanders finally a long-awaited victory, not necessarily on the field or anywhere else, but the state of Maryland granted them a sports betting license construction to begin soon, probably with a sports book next to FedEx Field or part of it contiguous. Remember the Washington Wizards and Capitals did it at Capital One Arena a few years ago, converting a restaurant been very successful. couple of things. One is, this is of course is in suburban Maryland. Revenues will be generated as part of the whole Maryland Casino Initiative. Number two, the former Redskins commanders needed a victory. The press release all over the positive nature of what this means. And third, we have an opportunity to yet again have a facility for gaming in or next to a sports facility. Sports professor Rick Haro, Sports News Minute.
Back right here on a football Friday, live on the morning after on Sports Grid and Sirius XM Channel 159. It is a football Friday for a multitude of reasons. Namely, at least in my opinion, week zero of college football starts tomorrow. Today is the final day of the offseason in CFB. The college football campaign in the year 2022 starts tomorrow. But the final week of the preseason in the NFL underway last night with four more games for some Friday night lights here on your football Friday evening as well. We go back to the two games that we had on a Thursday evening to start week three of the NFL preseason. A game we broke down for you multiple times yesterday with a line that was intriguing to us here on the morning after the Houston Texans hosting the San Francisco 49ers and the Texans at the time we spoke around this time yesterday were a three and a half point home underdog both the Niners and the Texans entered yesterday's preseason finale a perfect two and oh but only the Houston Texans will emerge with a perfect preseason shutting out San Francisco yesterday at home 17 to diddly squat for a perfect 3-0 preseason here in 2022. And the line reflected that. It closed with the Texans only being a two and a half point underdog around plus 130, plus 135 on that money line outright. Damian Pierce, the rookie running back out of Florida, has impressed thoroughly throughout this preseason. And he did last night in the Texans preseason finale. Six carries, 37 yards in the opening score of the game. And we saw two second-year quarterbacks both in action last night, and they will be the two starters for the respective ball clubs. First for Houston, Davis Mills pretty much played the entirety of the first half. Six of 10, 58 yards, a touchdown, and an interception. Trey Lance, on the other side, got the start for San Francisco. Two drives, seven of 11 through the air, 49 yards. The rookie Brock Purdy, by the way, out of Iowa State, an impressive preseason for Kyle Shanahan and SF, 13 of 20, 182 yards, and an interception. So Trey Lance got the start last night. He started week one of the preseason for SF, did not play in week number two for San Francisco, and then an appearance last night, the opening two possessions of the game for the 49ers. It is Trey's time in the Bay. He is the quarterback for San Francisco moving forward into the 2022 regular season. Trey Lance played in six games last year during his rookie campaign for San Francisco, only making two starts. Those numbers that you will see for his season-long props for this upcoming year, all projection, nothing based on what we saw last year. 3,300 and a half for his passing yards prop, 21 and a hook for his passing touchdowns prop, and 11 and a half for his interceptions now here's the thing for Trey Lance you would think with the offensive mastermind that is Kyle Shanahan orchestrating that offense for San Francisco in all of the talent that Trey Lance has at his disposal offensively he will not be tasked with doing all that much put in the best spots to have success under Kyle Shanahan and this is not a knock against Jimmy Garoppolo Jimmy G got the 49ers to Super Bowl 53 back in 2019 he got a Super Bowl 54 rather but Super Bowl 54 back in 2019 and on the brink of another Super Bowl appearance in the NFC Championship last year that was not because of Jimmy G but certainly not in spite of Jimmy Garoppolo either if Trey Lance is even at that level and that would certainly not be the optimism that we have for Trey Lance in San Francisco this Niners team is expected to be very very good this upcoming season in the NFL a nine and a half win total for the Niners this year the over has the juice right now for San Francisco at minus 145 those odds to make the postseason minus 225 some of the seven best in the NFL top five in terms of the NFC almost a surefire playoff team that is at least what the odds indicate for the 49ers this year and their price in the NFC West division plus 175 the second best number but only 50 cents behind the Rams expected to be competitive for that divisional crown once again here in 2022 so that was one of the two games that we had in our Thursday night doubleheader to start off preseason week three in the National Football League. The other game inside Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City, Missouri, between the Chiefs 
And the Packers, it was another home dog with KC catching a point and a half as the underdog last night in Kansas City. And the Chiefs emerged victorious as well. 17-10 to 10, capping off their preseason, going 2-1 in those three games. They went outright as a point and a half dog. The total of 37 and a half stays under. Both games under last night. The total for San Francisco and Houston was 40 and a half. Patrick Mahomes lined up in the opening choir huddle for the Kansas City Chiefs as a way to play honor, to pay honor rather, to the late Len Dawson, who passed away earlier this week, a football legend, a Super Bowl champion, a Super Bowl MVP, an NFL Hall of Famer, and a Kansas City Chiefs great. He passed away earlier this week. Patrick Mahomes goes out there, lines up in the famed choir huddle that Len Dawson made ever so popular, and then he checked out of the game. As for the game actions, Shane Bouchelle for Kansas City last night, absolutely sensational. A huge game, 11 of 17, 166 yards, and two touchdowns. And please keep an eye on the updated backfield for the Chiefs this year. Isaiah Pacheco, the rookie running back out of Rutgers, Look at his price in the Offensive Rookie of the Year market at 25-1. to 1. And Ronald Jones, Rojo, over from Tampa Bay. Those two backs combined for 95 yards on the ground yesterday. No Aaron Rodgers on the other side for the Packers. Jordan Love got a ton of run for Green Bay this preseason. 16 of 26 last night, 148 yards, and did throw an interception. Four INTs in total this preseason and as we look at the Packers and the Chiefs we broke it down for you previewing this preseason finale inside Arrowhead yesterday they have had divisional dominance Green Bay has won the NFC North three straight years eight of the last 11 seasons Kansas City a champion in the AFC West six consecutive seasons and the path because of that to appearing in a conference championship game through a postseason run and potentially a Super Bowl makes a ton of sense. Kansas City and Green Bay in a very familiar setting as it pertains to the odds to win Super Bowl 57. The Chiefs, the third best price right now on the FanDuel Sportsbook at 10-1. to The Packers round out the top five at 12-1. to So KC and Green Bay, two of the five best odds to win a Super Bowl this season. But the Super Bowl favorites are the Buffalo Bills, a short number that grows even shorter throughout these preseason months, now at plus 600 for Buffalo. They are in action tonight, Friday Night Lights edition, for the preseason finale in the NFL here, week number three. It is astounding, in my opinion, for Buffalo to be catching six and a half as an underdog. I understand they're on the road in Carolina against the Panthers, but what motivation do the Panthers have? They've already named Baker Mayfield the starting quarterback, so sure, we'll see P.J. Walker out there, and sure, Sam Darnold will get some run as well, but the Buffalo Bills are a great preseason team. We highlight the Baltimore Ravens, and rightfully so. The Ravens have won 22 consecutive preseason games, continuously adding on to their already NFL record, but Buffalo... Under Sean McDermott, also very good in the preseason. Since Sean McDermott has become the head coach over there in Western New York, the Buffalo Bills are 12-5 and five straight up in the preseason, covering near a clip of 70% against the spread. I think you could make an argument for that plus 210 money line price for the Buffalo Bills tonight, but certainly going to grab them, getting six and a half points on the road in Carolina. We're not going to see Josh Allen. Whoop de doo. Who expected to see Josh Allen week three of the preseason? But Case Keenum, old reliable, has been great for Buffalo and tons of young talent to figure out in that running back room as well. Give me Buffalo with six and a half. If it wasn't week zero of the college football season, the Bills plus six and a half would be my bye 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 best bet. But of course, it has to be something from Nebraska and Northwestern. We get a preview with Connor Happer up next here on the morning app. racing the clock's running out it all comes down to this we're talking pre-game 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 get locked in with game time decisions 
your hosts, Gabe Marinci and Cam Stewart, will get you ready for game time. Everything you need to know before a game goes off the board with the best lips to back it up. Make your best bet with live odds updates, late breaking news, up to the minute injury reports, and real time analytics from inside the sports books. All the odds, all the action from sports wagering insiders and industry pros like Donnie Wrightside, Cam Liu, Cousin Sal, the pro football doc, Dr. David Chow, and more. Get the winning edge every weekday afternoon from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern, 3 to 4 Pacific. It's game time decisions only on Sports Grid. You might be the next daily fantasy millionaire. No matter what you watch or where you play, learn from the world's best DFS players. Lineup building tools, expert projections, and advanced stats change the way you play the game. Dominate the competition. DailyRoto.com, the player's choice. The Bostonian versus the book. They don't kick field goals, so now like a stupid number like 32 or something should be used because it ain't a multiple of three and all these other things that go into making the numbers. Like, all right, I ain't ever going to kick a field goal. So 35 and a half is not an option or something. Like you got to move it quicker. People will figure it out. The, the, the rhombuses and the parallelograms will figure it out. The Bostonian versus the book. The early line. Spencer Sanders, mm -hmm. first team. Right, Dylan Gabriel, second team, JT Daniels, third team. Yeah, I tell you what, right now, Quinn Ewers is better than all. <laughs> Donnie, you and I bet Oklahoma State last year over. Don't be surprised if they are favored at Oklahoma State by the time we get to that game. I don't think the schedule is as daunting and a plus price on eight and a half. It does really catch my attention here on Texas. Only on Sports Grid. Fantasy Sports Today. The second quarterback basically taken in fantasy drafts. And uh, if the numbers are the same this year, then he's going exactly where he should. So do you anticipate the numbers, Davis, being exactly the same? I think there's a reasonable chance that he could actually be more effective this season than he was last season. So behind Tyreek Hill, the three wide receivers who played the most snaps on the Kansas City Chiefs were Demarcus Robinson. The Sports Grid Network. Back right here on the morning after on SportsGrid. Today is the final day of the college football offseason because tomorrow, the 2022 college football campaign kicks off. And for Nebraska and Northwestern, that happens in Dublin. So we go to the source. Well, at least Omaha, Nebraska. Connor Happer joins the show here on the morning after. My good friend from my days living and working in Nebraska as well. Connor Happer, the host of of the Connor Happer Show each and every weekday on 1620 The Zone there in Omaha. Connor Happer, thank you for making your The Morning After debut. And on the eve of Nebraska and Northwestern in Dublin, we thank you for taking yeah. the time. Ben, thanks for having me, man. There's some excitement here, even though the team's overseas, but uh, we got to get this thing going. Let's go. And tons of Husker Red across the pond as well, as we have seen in the buildup to this game inside Aviva Stadium tomorrow between Nebraska and Northwestern. We'll get to the specifics of the matchup between the Huskers and the Wildcats in just a few moments. But first, Connor, allow me to go big picture here. It is the fifth year of the Scott Frost era in Lincoln, Nebraska. It has not been the best four years under the prodigal son return back to Lincoln for Scott Frost. As we look forward to this season, Nebraska's win total is seven and a half. It seems like a lofty number for a team that has combined for six wins the past two seasons. So, Connor, what do you think is a fair level of expectation for the Huskers entering 2022? 
Yeah, as far as the win total, I mean, the schedule is is pretty light, um, especially right out of the gate. Uh, those first eight games, uh, with the exception of Nebraska playing Oklahoma and and maybe against Purdue, they'll probably be favorites in, in every single one of them, and they'll be double-digit favorites in, in a lot of them. Um, so there's a sort of light, easy runway for Nebraska to start off. Um, if they take advantage of that, the problem is Nebraska hasn't uh, done a really good job over the last couple of years of beating the teams that they're supposed to. Uh, they're not they're not very good as a favorite, um, which is, you know, crazy. Uh, yep. But, you know, if they can if they can take care of business in the first two months of the season, they're going to give themselves a chance for a for a big last four. I think people are expecting at least to go to a bowl game um, and then you sort of work off that. All right. Drum roll, please. Brrrrum. Connor Happers, official Nebraska record prediction for the 2022 season is what? I got them at seven and five. I, I think it's going to be um, they're going to you know do everything they can in, in the first uh, seven eight games of the year here. Um, I think they're probably looking at uh, six and two something like that to start off the season, which maybe that they, that bumps them into the top twenty five. I mean, this they has been it. a momentum thing throughout the Scott Frost era. So maybe if they can get the ball rolling downhill, who knows what happens in those final four? Um, but I, I got them with seven this year, which is right under that number. Um, and you're going to be sort of in that area. That stayed steady all, all summer long, which I'm like sort of surprised about, maybe a little bit, but we thought it was high sort of at the start. Um, yep. But I think they're going to be right around it when it comes down to it. The juice has moved on that over, but it's always been on the over. It was minus 135 at its peak when I saw it earlier, maybe in the middle of July. It came down to minus 110, even on both sides. Now a slight bit of juice on that over of the seven and a half win total for the Cornhuskers at minus 115. And Connor, the optimism is always high for Nebraska in the off season. And to win a Big Ten West championship, and the Huskers have the second best odds to do that, they would have to knock off the likes of Iowa and Wisconsin, which Scott Frost has yet to do in his four years in Lincoln, Nebraska. Nebraska has the second best odds, as we mentioned, in the Big Ten West, plus 350 nearly $2 behind Wisconsin, the betting favorites at plus 170 Connor, when you see the Huskers there with the second best price to win the Big Ten West, can they actually compete for a divisional title this season? I think they're going to put themselves in position to do so in as we go into November. Um, and then maybe that's where it sort of stops. I, I, they're, like I said, I mean, when you look at the Big Ten West and, and the teams that have won it over the last couple of years, They've taken uh, advantage of what they're able to do in their opponents inside the division. They've beaten their opponents inside the division and they've had light crossovers. So you're not getting Ohio State. Nebraska can check that box. Nebraska not, Nebraska not getting Ohio State this year. They do have a road game uh, in Michigan in November, which is obviously going to be a really tough game um, for them. Their other two crossovers against Indiana and Rutgers. So uh, they, they have it light in the crossover as far as the Big Ten West East split is concerned. I think they're going to put themselves in position to compete for it, which is sort of what people want around here when it's, you know, it's high level football and important right. football in the month of November. But ultimately, it's going to come down to beating teams like Minnesota, Iowa and Wisconsin. And I, I just I'm not quite there yet. We'll see how it unfolds in the first couple months here. Um, but Nebraska struggled with all three of those programs. Connor Happer, for whatever reason, I keep very few notes on my phone. One of the notes that I do keep in the notes app, you can't see it, it's too far away, but it's Scott Frost's record during his time at Nebraska. That includes the overall record, the Big Ten record, and against the Big Ten West. And Scott Frost, in four seasons, just 6-17 and 17 against his divisional opponents. If they are going to win a Big Ten West title, if this is finally the year the offseason hype meets regular season results, it will happen through that division. Speaking of the division, Nebraska's season opener tomorrow in Dublin, Ireland, is against a Big Ten West foe in Northwestern. Connor, on this Friday morning, we have seen movement in that number. 13 and a half in favor of the Huskers yesterday, now down to 11 and a half in favor of Nebraska on the FanDuel Sportsbook. How do you break down this matchup between the Huskers and the Wildcats? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's a tough one. There, there's so many unknowns. I think both coaches have been pretty, you know, playing it close to the vest here in the, in the week and really even weeks, months leading up to the game. Uh, Northwestern hasn't announced a starting quarterback, even though they have the returner. We assume it'll be Ryan Holinsky, but I, we'll see when they get out there. 
uh, tomorrow afternoon. Uh, Nebraska is not tipping their hand too much on uh, what their offense is going to look like. But I've just got the sense um, all week that – and Mark Whipple has sort of said this in his comments. He, he said don't lose the game in the first quarter. It's something Nebraska has struggled with a whole bunch last year, just shooting themselves in the foot, get, you know, letting it get away from them in the first yeah. couple quarters of the game and then having to fight back throughout the entire time. So I just get the sense that it's going to be a little bit conservative – I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, it's if it's seven nothing, seven seven, three nothing even at the end of the first quarter. So maybe I mean from a betting angle, you take a look at that first half under and uh you yep. sort of uh like it there. I, I think it's gonna be slow, um, but but ultimately I, I do think Nebraska has enough to to get it done here and get on the plane and get back home. That's what I looked at, that first half total, 26 and a half, because Nebraska was not great at getting out of the gates last year, just averaging 12.3 points per game in the opening two quarters, 85th out of 130 FBS teams a season ago. Northwestern was abysmal, the fourth worst first half scoring offense in the country, averaging seven and a half points. That first half total, 26 and a half. But you mentioned the new offensive scheme. In Lincoln, a new offensive coordinator, Mark Whipple, over from the ACC champion Pittsburgh Panthers, where he orchestrated an offense that had Kenny Pickett as a Heisman finalist. It's also a new quarterback for Nebraska this year, the Texas transfer in Casey Thompson. His passing yards prop tomorrow, Connor, 230 and a half to find the end zone, plus 195 for Casey Thompson in that anytime touchdown scoring prop. What can we expect out of Casey Thompson in Mark Whipple's offense this season? Yeah, I think they're going to, like I said, I, and I think they'll probably try and tamp down. I mean, one, one of the staples of the Nebraska offense over the last four years is them leaning heavily on Adrian Martinez, especially in the run game. Uh, Adrian's gone. He's at Kansas State now, and he's probably in a better situation. And and they get to come here. Mark Whipple gets to come here, and he gets a fresh situation too. And Casey Thompson who needed to change from Texas as well. I think they're just going to try really hard to not turn the ball over. It, it's been it's mm. been so difficult on that front um, for Nebraska over the last couple of years, um, and they went. It was a battle in camp between Casey Thompson and another transfer from Florida State and, and Chubba Purdy. Um, yeah. And the reason why Casey got the nod at the end of the day was because of a his ex, his experience. He has he has another year on on Chubba, but also because um, he's showed the ability to make the least amount of mistakes during fall camp. So he turned the ball over the lease and he gets the starting nod. Um, if Nebraska's in a situation where they might need some explosiveness, maybe Chubba Purdy is the guy. But I do think it's just going to be a sort of tamped down um, version of what you've seen over the last couple of years and leaning a little bit into Eric Shenander's defense. So which leads us, Connor Happer, to the idea that is the Big Ten credo. Run the damn ball. Last year, Nebraska against Northwestern rushed for 427 yards in Lincoln on their way to a 56-7 victory over the Wildcats. Ramir Johnson expected to be the lead back for the Huskers this year. His rushing yards prop, 67 and a half. How often will we see that ground game utilized for Nebraska against the Wildcats' poor rush defense tomorrow? Yeah, that number's interesting. Uh, um, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't count on Ramir being the every down back. Uh, I think hmm. he's going to do a lot of different things for this offense. He might be on the field a lot. I don't know how much he'll have the ball in his hands, especially in the in the conventional run game. I think Nebraska's lead back on Saturday will be Anthony Grant, and then you'll probably see some Gabe Urban. You might see some Jacques Yant as well, um, and then Ramir is sort of the utility man, he could do a little bit of everything. And he worked well in that role last year for Nebraska. So if it's 67 and a half, I sort of like the under there uh, for Ooh. Ramir. Um, so uh, you, you might take a look at that. But yeah, it's going to be a run the ball thing, uh, but with a whole bunch of different characters. Connor Happer from the heart of Nebraska in Omaha, previewing Nebraska and Northwestern and the Huskers season for 2022. The host of the aptly named Connor Happer show on 1620 The Zone in Omaha. Connor, we appreciate your time. More of the morning after. Thanks, Ben. Appreciate it.
might be the next daily fantasy millionaire. No matter what you watch or where you play, learn from the world's best DFS players. Lineup building tools, expert projections, and advanced stats change the way you play the game. Dominate the competition. DailyRoto.com, the player's choice. The Bostonian versus the book. I'm not buying you dinner because I'm wrong. I'm buying you dinner because you're in town and it's a nice thing for a friend to do with another friend. Just buy them dinner. No, but you, I have to pick up my phone and hold it right now because it's <laughs> buzzing nonstop <laughs> because you're talking. Well, that's what I do. So that's kind of my thing. It's kind of that's hard to stop me from talking. <laughs> kind of hard to stop me from talking. People have tried for 45 years. It hasn't really worked yet. So the Bostonian versus the book. to coast Bryce Harper will be activated by the Phillies tomorrow uh, that just came down uh, manager Rob Thompson said that before the game tonight with the Reds so Bryce back and look I mean what more could he do down in the minors he had a game with two home runs and then he had a walk-off double last night for them I mean <laughs> what more do you need he's to still see in from the minors. Down there? He, he's still in the minors yeah. he's playing the Pirates the Sports Grid Network Fantasy Sports Today. And Marquez Valdez Scantling, who uh, had 400 rec- uh, receiving yards last year, three touchdowns, and his ADP is 148. He's the 53rd wide receiver taken. And uh, look, I understand your, your commentary about Rodgers and if he likes who he throws to, and if he doesn't, and he just doesn't. But I mean, he had the chance <laughs> in Green Bay for several years and was a big disappointment. I'm, I'm not going to be in on this player. The Sports Grid Network. The early line. Bryce Young, A plus 400, quarterback, quarterback. How about Caleb Williams goes out to USC from Oklahoma, 6-1. to one. Guess what? He's a quarterback. DJ Uyunglele. How about that? 25-1, to one. quarterback from Clemson. Oh, no, look at this. Will Anderson, a defensive end in college football for the Alabama Crimson Tide. It seems like if anybody's going to win a Heisman Trophy outside the quarterback, it has to apparently come from Alabama. Only on Sports Grid. A football Friday, live right here on the morning after on Sports Grid. The final Friday of the offseason for 2022 college football. Because the regular season starts tomorrow in just about 24 hours time for the 2022 campaign. Week zero on a Saturday. But before we get there, we use this final day of the CFB offseason to set the stage one final time time and we go with the biggest picture the odds to win a national championship as we showed you earlier in the show Alabama is the preseason favorite plus 180 to win a national championship Ohio State had the most movement throughout these summer months up to the second best odds in the country five to one earlier this offseason now three to one only behind Alabama within a dollar and 20 cents of the tide and 50 cents ahead of the reigning national title winners in the Georgia Bulldogs. Plus 350, the price for Kirby Smart and the Dogs. Clemson, plus 800, the fourth best number in USC. The optimism in Southern California for Lincoln Riley's first year at SC, 20 to one for the Trojans. Of course, as it should be, college football has a little bit of chalk as we see, as the odds indicate for this upcoming season. I'll make this point. I have made this point many times. There is an eight-year history of the college football playoff. 32 available spots out of the four final teams each and every year in the eight-year history 
of the CFP. And six college football programs have taken 25 of those 32 spots, led by Alabama, then Clemson, Ohio State, and Oklahoma, Georgia, Notre Dame, and that is the six. 25 of 32 out of those six programs. So college football can often be chalk. And in the last five years, those six programs, 17 of the 20. But last year, we had a couple of first-timers. Michigan out of the Big Ten, finally in the seventh year of Jim Harbaugh's tenure in Ann Arbor, getting past Ohio State, winning a Big Ten championship and into the CFP. And for the first time in the history of the college football playoff, a group of five team qualified in Cincinnati. But again, as the odds indicate, those are very familiar names at the top of the board. And those top four odds, with four being a magic number as it pertains to the college football playoff we can take it even a step further for Alabama or Ohio State or Georgia to win a national championship that's three teams out of the 131 FBS programs that play division one college football those three teams are favored to win a national championship against the field it's three versus 128 in Alabama Ohio State or Georgia is minus 340 chalkity chalk chalk oftentimes in college football we will see if that is the case once again in 2022 now the sec between alabama georgia lsu they have won a ton of national championships here as of late when you look at the history of the college football playoff in those eight years the sec has been dominant and there's only been two times in the eight-year history of the college football playoff We have seen two teams from the same conference both get a bid in the same season to the college football playoff. It's been Alabama and Georgia both times, including last year in 2021. And it might be the case this year as the odds would indicate. Now, Alabama is the odds-on favorite to win an SEC championship. The Tide have won two straight three of the last four, six of the last eight, minus 140. Their win total is up finally to 11 and a half. And yes, the under has the juice. I understand that. But you can't make the over have the juice because then it's an indication that Alabama must have a perfect undefeated season to go over that win total. To get 10 wins, as you saw, is minus 3,500. Now, Georgia has the second best price to win the SEC at plus 160. The dogs win total is 10 and a half. The over has a ton of juice at minus 250. And the expectation heavily is that UGA this year is a double digit win team at the bare minimum. Now, Georgia's odds to make the college football playoff, as we have detailed this week on the morning after, minus 160. There are three teams in minus money to make the college football playoff this year Alabama minus 350, Ohio State minus 280, and then the dogs at minus 160. But again, only two times in eight years have we seen two teams from the same conference qualify for the college football playoff in that same season. It has been Alabama and Georgia and the SEC all times. And when you're Nick Saban and you've already won the most national championships as any head coach has in the history of college football, you're not done there. Saban has seven national titles he has won six of those in Tuscaloosa with the Crimson Tide and the expectation is at least based on the odds the Tide the favorite to do so once again at plus 180 so because of that even though Nick Saban is already into his 70s you want to keep him around and that's what Alabama did earlier this week an eight-year extension for Nick Saban worth 94 million dollars to keep coach Nick Saban as the highest paid head coach in all of college football we're talking ten and a half million dollars a year and by the time he turns 79 in the final year of that extension that goes north of 12 million dollars per season yeah Nick Saban is the best to ever do it the money although astronomical makes sense when it comes to keeping the best head coach in Tuscaloosa so what drives Nick Saban on his pursuit each and every year don't take it from me hear from coach Saban himself out of and one of the players asked him is how did you stay motivated when you had so much success for so long? And he said, I love the process. 
I love watching film. I love to practice. I caught extra balls before practice. I ran routes with the quarterback after practice. I love the process. And then when the game came, it was really, really easy. So, you know, that's kind of interesting because some of our best players, some of our really good players that we've had here traditionally in the past, that's exactly how they work. And that's exactly how a lot of the guys on our team right now that are really good players, that's how they are. But we need to have everybody be that way. We don't have anybody, we don't need anybody trying to get out of drills or practicing or whatever. And if they love the process of what it takes not to win a game, but to do the things you need to do to be able to win a game, All right? not to do the things, not just think about being a starter, but what do you do to be a starter? What, what does a starter act like? How does a starter practice? How does a starter go about being responsible to do his job? And I think that was a, a really good message. And I think it's a message that, and, you know, Larry made a point of this, that it's the same thing in your life. Being a good parent, being a good husband, doing a good job in whatever it is you do. Um, so it was kind of interesting. But I get asked a lot. I never, ever thought of this. How do you stay motivated? And I, I never really could answer it. But I, I love the process. I love practicing. I like getting ready for practice. I like coaching the players on the field, trying to get them to play as good as they can be. So we have the best chance. They have the best chance to be successful. We have the best chance to be successful. So hopefully we can get a whole team full of guys getting ready to do that. Nick Saban said last year, when Alabama won its second straight SEC championship, knocking off Georgia, putting up 41 big ones against that unreal dogs defense, that it was a rebuilding year in Tuscaloosa. And they still made the national championship without two of their best wide receivers and still made it a competitive ball game against Georgia. If that's a rebuild, good luck to the rest of college football. Alabama has won three national championships of the eight-year history of the college football playoff. The Tide have been present in seven of the eight CFPs, the second most national championships and the second most appearances, the Clemson Tigers. The Tigers have won two of the eight college football playoff national championships, most recently in 2018. They have appeared in six of the eight college football playoffs, but not last season. It was a disastrous year in Clemson, South Carolina by relative standards for Dabo Sweeney and company, but they still finished with double-digit wins in a Cheez-It Bowl victory to end out the year. The win total this season is back to 10.5. To get double-digit wins again, favored to do so at minus 600. And their odds to win an ACC championship, minus 155. Better than Bama win the SEC and Clemson appeared in the college football playoff for six years because they won the ACC for six straight seasons if Clemson wins the ACC once again with only a single loss on the record I guarantee you the Clemson Tigers will be a member of the college football playoff this year their odds to make the CFP the first team in plus money at plus 125 so that's the big picture perspective the best odds of any team to win any division in all of college football, group of five league, power five conference, it does not matter. That would be the Ohio State Buckeyes, and they only grow more in favor of the Ohio State. Now, minus 210 to win the Big Ten Conference. The Buckeyes have won five of the eight most recent Big Ten titles, but not last year. Michigan knocked off Ohio State. The Wolverines had the second best price. Of course, we have Big Ten teams in action tomorrow for week zero, namely Nebraska and Northwestern in Dublin. But don't forget about Illinois hosting Wyoming now as a 12 and a half point favorite. So what's the game plan looking like in Dublin? Well, it feels very cosmic, right? And as we look at that game plan for tomorrow to play internationally, how will that Nebraska defense get ready to go against a Wildcats offense that left a lot to be desired a season ago? Defensive coordinator for the Huskers, Eric Chenander, gives us the game plan. Yeah, I want to see uh, if these guys are who they think, who I think they are, you know. And, and by that, I mean, will they play as hard as they have? Can they step it up a little bit? 
you know, I want to see big time effort. I want to obviously, you know, we've had as much live tackling as you get anymore in fall camp, but we got to see if we can tackle. We got to see if we can communicate and make our checks when the stadium's full. We're in a new environment. Uh, it should be a great atmosphere. And, and you know, like I said, the, the bright lights are on them. So some of these guys are starting their first game. We'll see if they can operate. Eric Chenander's defense for Nebraska has only improved. He has been with Scott Frost since their days together at Central Florida. He has been on many of the staffs that Scott Frost has also coached on. And Nebraska last year, from that scoring defense perspective, a top 40 unit in college football, only allowing 24 points per game. Northwestern's offense was not very good a season ago. We'll see how it plays out tomorrow in Dublin. But for one final time in this offseason, allow me to tell you my favorite win totals in the entirety of college football for 2022. Now you'll see a number on Utah that looks rather dramatic. The over is minus 170 of Utah's win total of eight and a half. But I grabbed this a month and a half ago when that over had the juice at only minus 115. Utah is my pick to win the Pac-12. Utah will make the college football playoff, in my estimation, easily sailing over eight and a half wins. And stop doubting the Iowa Hawkeyes. Kirk Ferentz is a staple of consistency they have gone over seven and a half wins in six of the last seven years in Iowa City in full seasons that is so the Iowa Hawkeyes over seven and a half is a safe bet by me we round out hour one up next here on the morning app If you want to pick like a pro, you need to be in the know. The future of sports gaming is now, and we take you inside the lines, breaking down all the action and what it means for your bet slip. Turn down the game and tune into Sports Grid Radio. Other networks talk sports talk, but we walk the walk right up to the window. Sports Grid Radio. Listen free on the Sports Grid Radio app, iHeart, or tune in, or catch us on Sirius XM Sports Grid Channel 159. Maurice Allen, 2015-2016 European Long Drive Tour Champion, 2017 World Number One. Me personally, I keep my game face on me all the time. Especially coming out of the bunker, leaving the range, or even leaving the course. What's your story? Pharrell, coast to coast. What's in store for him, I think, is going to be a lot of turning around and handing the ball off. Uh, when you look at Luke Getz's offense, Justin Fields making his first ever start in the NFL, got sacked nine times. Right. And uh, Matt Nagy didn't bother uh, letting his running backs, you know, chip blockers or, or take on pass rush responsibilities. And that is so irresponsible. And I think Fields will benefit from having a coaching staff that's a little smarter about how they The Sports Grid Network. The Bostonian versus the book. It's not even roll call Friday. The boys oh, are all chatting in 11 That's games. Fine. 11 Maybe. games. It's fine. That's an appeal. Language matters. You guys all would fail law school. You know? It's, it's what law school did you go to again? Uh, I didn't need to. My father went to Boston College of Law. So, my father's a lawyer. It, so, I know a lot of people whose fathers or lawyers are in jail. And and, 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 <laughs> the Bostonian versus the book. Fantasy Sports Today. The second quarterback basically taken in fantasy drafts. And uh, if the numbers are the same this year, then he's going exactly where he should. So do you anticipate the numbers, Davis, being exactly the same? I think there's a reasonable chance that he could actually be more effective this season than he was last season. So behind Tyreek Hill, the three wide receivers who played the most snaps on the Kansas City Chiefs were Demarcus Robinson. The Sports Grid Network. The early line. No exact time set on how long he will be out, but it appears to be at least months of this upcoming season, which is, again, probably what? At least eight games for Tyron Smith? 
Yeah, reading through the practice reports, it looks like it was devastating news right away off the top, and then you started to get that good feel like, oh, you know what, he avoided major disaster, but really did he? Only on Sports Grid. Rounding out our number one of the first football Friday this year, live on the morning after on Sports Grid, Sirius XM Channel 159, the home for Sports Grid Radio on Sirius XM, all across the Spiz Grizz Network as well. That's Sports Grid. I am Ben Stevens. I was very nervous for the responses to this poll that we will show you in just a moment. Hearing your thoughts on what you are most excited for this weekend. Because let's face it, there is a ton of football. And although I am jazzed up for college football week zero, some out there might be thinking, eh, it's not the greatest slate ever. Yeah, Nebraska, Northwestern, and Dublin. But I'm not a sicko. I'm not staying up until 10.30 p.m. Eastern time to watch Vanderbilt in Hawaii or New Mexico State in Nevada. I am a sicko. And I'm glad with the responses we got in our Fade the Public poll. Let's hear from you right now in Fade the Public. The question was a simple one. Which kind of football are you most excited for this weekend? College football week zero or the NFL preseason slate? The finale of the preseason at week number three. 83% of the public saying college football week zero. I knew I could trust in you, public. I knew that I could believe in you. And based on what we are seeing in some early line movement on this Friday morning, Maybe it is the public as excited as I am for the week zero slate tomorrow on a Saturday in college football. For instance, that most public game, the marquee matchup of the week zero schedule, Nebraska and Northwestern. We have seen tons of movement on that number. Two points, in fact, on this Friday morning. Nebraska yesterday and for most of the last week, a 13 and a half point favorite against Northwestern. That number is now down to just 11 and a half on the FanDuel Sportsbook. We'll continue to break down week zero of college football. I mean all of week zero of college football in hour number two here of the morning after on Sports Grid. Hour number two is up next following a Sports Grid news update from Alex Fasano. Come back and join us. 